everyone. Welcome to our podcast series on a guide for first-time property buyers. Hi everyone and welcome. So for this episode, we will be looking at the costs associated with buying and selling property. So before we delve into the costs involved in buying or selling the property, what we must keep in mind is that uh, when buying or selling your property, there's three types of conveyances or attorneys that you'll most likely deal with. That is the transferring attorneys, the bond attorneys, as well as the cancellation attorneys. So the transferring attorneys will be the attorneys that transfer the property to and from your name. The bond attorneys will register the mortgage bond in your name. And then lastly, the cancellation attorney will cancel any registered mortgage bonds. Um, So in any one transaction, one conveyancing firm can deal with all three. Mm. And uh, the mistakes now, however, that a lot of people do is not to budget for their conveyancing or bond registration costs. Mm. And that can cause a lot of frustration to them when they are presented with these big accounts, you know, during Mm. the conveyancing process. But what uh, people must keep in mind is that we as conveyancers, we we are actually guided by a regulated tariff that helps us us determine the fees that you charge for each um, conveyancing uh, transaction. But basically, the higher the purchase price of the property, the higher the conveyancing fees. Um, Snake, could you maybe explain what sort of costs can I expect as um, as a purchase of the property? Firstly, the transfer costs are the responsibility of the purchaser. So when you receive your pro forma account, uh, the cost that you will usually see on the statement would be um, the cost for the conveyances for attending to the work, agency fees if they are lodging the matter with another firm, um, as well as the posters and petties and um, as well as the levy clearance certificates as well as the consents from the body corporate if you're buying a sectional property. And another fee that you can also expect guys is um, the deeds office registration fee which will basically be the fee that um, the the deeds office charges for examining the documents. You can also expect to pay for the postages and petties uh, of running the conveyancing file, the FICA verification uh, fee as well for um, doing the screenings, you know, just verifying, you know, the clients we're dealing with. And if you've done your um, sale agreement through an attorney or your conveyancer, they might charge you for, for drafting that sale agreement as well. So another fee that purchasers should look out for is um, transfer duty. So if you are purchasing property over a million rand, um, there will be transfer duty payable on this, which is a tax that's payable to SARS. But this amount is based on um, a threshold that changes from time to time. And as a purchaser of a property, you can also expect to pay for the rate clearance application fee payable to the municipality. Um, this is, however, different Sne, from the actual rates that are payable over the property. This fee that you'll be paying is for making the application at the municipality to get the rate clearance certificate um, itself. So both the purchaser and the seller would essentially be responsible for the rates. So as the seller, you're responsible for paying any outstanding rates. And then as the purchaser, you're responsible to make sure that there's a credit balance upon the date of registration. And also if you're buying um, a flat or a sectional property, you can also expect the same um, breakdown in terms of the um, the levies payable to the body corporate. But basically with with buying from a flat or a sectional property, the seller will pay for the uh, body corporate levies up until the property is registered into the new owner's name. And then uh, the purchaser, however, will be expected to pay for the um, application now for actually obtaining the levy clearance certificate that the conveyances will need to have on their files. But uh, I don't think you need to be overwhelmed by all of those costs because, you know, um, at the beginning of the running of the conveyancing file, you will get a proforma account which will list all of these costs for you uh, and tell you what exactly they are being charged for during the conveyancing file. But now, Sne, what happens if I don't have uh, money to pay for my rates as the seller of the property. So the seller could always get bridging finance. So what bridging finance is, it's a loan to pay off um, any transfer expenses. So um, yes, they could always um, go for the bridging finance and then this amount will be deducted from the purchase price upon registration. 
So the other cost you can expect to pay as the seller of the property is the estate agent's commission. If you have used an estate agent to uh, market your, your, your property and eventually find a seller for your property. But this uh, commission will however be deducted from the purchase price that the purchaser would have paid towards uh, acquiring the property. You can also expect to pay for various compliance certificates that the property is free of pests, that uh, gas, is, gas and electricity has been installed um, accordingly on, on, on the property. So I think now that we've covered the transfer costs, um, we should look at the bond registration costs. So um, the bond registration costs are based on the amount um, that's been granted to you by the financial institution. So the higher the mortgage bond registration well, my amount that you're registering, the higher the bond registration costs will be. And you'll be happy to know as well that uh, our company website has actually a bond and transfer fees calculator that can help you you know know in advance the cost that you can expect for your bond or your transfer fees what you need to do is just you know punch in the purchase price of the property or the mortgage bond amount that you got from the bank and our calculator will then you know give you an estimate of the fees that you can expect to pay for your bond or your transfer fees Okay, and also when you receive your um, bond pro forma, um, the kind of cost that you will see on the statement would be uh, the bond registration fees for the conveyances, um, the deed searches fees, the registration fees at the deeds office, as well as postages and petties, and the document generation fee as well. And also if you are buying your property through a mortgage bond, you can also expect to pay for what is called a bond initiation fee, which is basically a fee that the bank charges you for um, uh, processing your bond application. Uh, but with these fees, nay, um, you actually have an option. You can have it included within your mortgage bond so that you can pay it over time, or you can pay it upfront together with your um, bond registration fees. And also just to remember, when you are registering your mortgage bond, you will sign, you'll also need to sign another set of documents. So the bond documents with the bond attorney, which we previously explained. And um, these will be lodged with the transfer documents as well, because the two transactions are linked. So they'll have to be lodged together at the deeds office. But uh, tell me Sne, now, is it possible for me as the purchaser of the property or as a person taking out a mortgage bond to nominate my own bond attorney? Yes, you can, um, provided that the attorneys are on the bank's panel of attorneys. And now seeing that the two transactions now would be linked, that is your conveyancing or your transferring um, of your property and the mortgage bond, uh, um, they seem to be linked transactions. Is it possible for them to be run by one conveyancing firm? So this will depend on the bank and um, what you can do when you're buying the property or when you're still applying for the finances is to speak to the bond originator or to speak to the bank consultant and they can happily sort this out for you. And then also what happens um, if I don't have the cost for registering the mortgage bond or the transfer fees? Well that's not a train smash. If you don't have uh, your bond or transfer fees what you can do is that um, you can speak to your bond originator at the time of making um, your bond application process. What they will do is maybe uh, find for you a bank that can advance your um, your bond uh, and transfer registration costs, which can then be added towards your, your home loan and then you can pay them over time. So then also as the seller, you should look out for cancellation costs. So if you already have a mortgage bond that's registered in your name, you will need to cancel this before the property is registered into the purchaser's name. So these fees are also based on tariff. So Sneh, just like with the bond that you would have obtained from, from the bank, um, when it comes to the cancellation of your uh, bond now on the existing property, the bank will also nominate a cancellation attorney on your behalf that can, you know, then cancel your, 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 your bond. Basically, that cancellation would be lodged together with the um, transfer of the property or the bond documents involved in, in, in the entire set. So then another thing to remember as the seller that you need your original title deed um, when you're selling the property because the deeds office will not accept um, copies of it. So another cost to look out for is applying for a certified copy. Um, so um, usually we'll apply for the certified copy before the documents are lodged at the deeds office. 
Yeah, so just in summary, depending on whether you're buying or selling property, there's three types of costs that you can expect to pay. That is your conveyancing fees for your conveyancing attorney or your transferring attorney, your bond um, registration fees for your bond attorney, as well as your cancellation fees for your cancellation attorney. But uh, obviously you can always keep in touch with us uh, if you need help with explaining any of those costs or uh, maybe the, the breakdown of the uh, performer accounts that you've received from 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 your conveyances would be happy to assist with that yes no, i would definitely happily explain it so in our next episode um, we will give a few hints on the do's and don'ts of um, registering your property